Tarantulas are large hairy spiders that most people find terrifying, especially when they come across them in nature. Most of that fear is based in the unknown, as most species of tarantula are essentially harmless to humans. No tarantula can be described as deadly or even aggressive, as they only show threat poses or bite in self-defense when they feel threatened or are protecting their egg sac. Tarantulas play a pivotal role in our ecosystems all around the world and help control pest and insect populations, but they are disappearing from the wild in some areas at an alarming rate. Number 1. The biggest factor for tarantulas becoming endangered or listed as threatened is deforestation. Destruction of forests all around the world due to urban sprawl and new development has greatly reduced the environments these tarantulas live in. Logging has also destroyed the homes of many species of arboreal tarantulas and pushed some species of Postlotheria nearly to the point of extinction. The burning of jungles and forests in South America and other parts of the world has also led to the decimation of habitats for all kinds of tarantula species, as well as many other animals. In many cases, these forests are replaced with palm trees grown for their palm oil. Palm oil has been and continues to be a major driver of deforestation of some of the world's most biodiverse forests, destroying the habitat of already endangered species. Palm oil is in nearly everything. It's in close to 50% of the packaged products we find in supermarkets. Anything from pizza, donuts, and chocolate to deodorant, shampoo, toothpaste, and lipstick. And it's also used in animal feed. Palm oil is an incredible efficient crop, producing more oil per land area than any other equivalent vegetable oil crop. Globally, palm oil supplies 40% of the world's vegetable oil demand on just under 6% of the land used to produce all vegetable oils. To get the same amount of alternative oils like soybean, coconut, or sunflower oil, you would need anything between 4 to 10 times more land, which would just shift the problem to other parts of the world and threaten other habitats, species, and communities. So boycotting palm oil is not the answer. The best thing we can do is support sustainable palm oil and avoid boycotts, since we know substitutions with with other vegetable oils can lead to further environmental and social harm. Number 2. Extermination is the second biggest threat to tarantulas around the world. Most people are terrified just at the sight of a large hairy tarantula and their initial instinct is to kill it, whether that is by smashing the individual spider or hiring a business to spray poison around their property that will kill spiders. This no doubt has a drastic negative effect on tarantula populations. Most people kill tarantulas out of a fear of being bitten, but some cultures around the world also see them as bad luck or bad omens and kill them on sight. This is particularly damaging because most of the tarantulas that are found by humans are wandering males or juveniles dispersing from their mother's burrow. This impedes them from colonizing new areas and contributing genetic diversity to their neighboring populations, which lowers the amount of new offspring and the continuation of that species in that particular area. It is undeniable that seeing a tarantula can be a scary encounter for some people, but killing them is not the answer. Live and let live. Tarantulas will not harm you unless you are trying to harm them, and they pose no threats to life or property. It is always best to let them pass on by and not interact with them if possible. If they wind up inside your home, you can safely remove them with a cup and place them back outside. You can also seal up cracks in spaces in doors and windows to keep them from re-entering your house if it becomes a common occurrence. Tarantulas take a long time to reach sexual maturity, and finding a mate in the wild is not always a guarantee. So removing a single male wandering in search of a female could possibly have drastic effects on their population for generations to come. Number 3. The pet trade, unfortunately, also has a part to play in tarantula's disappearance from the wild. A recent paper was published that tracked the amount of new species discovered in the wild and correlated that information with their quick appearance in the pet trade all around the world. Even species that are protected or were not legally exported from their endemic countries have found their way into the pet trade, though some of the assertions made in this paper were drastically exaggerated and a lot of data was admittedly incomplete or even based on assumptions and conjecture. There is no denying that poaching and smuggling of tarantula species is an issue, even if it isn't as big of an issue as this paper asserts. Most of the tarantulas sold in the pet trade these days are spiderlings that have been bred in captivity. Usually their parents were also captive bred, 
and their parents before them. There are networks of tarantula dealers all around the world that trade and ship male and female tarantulas to each other for breeding purposes. And captive bred spiders are imported and exported from many countries, all in an effort to alleviate the demand for wild-caught tarantulas. But this, unfortunately, has not completely eliminated the market for tarantulas caught in the wild. Many species of tarantula can be found in areas where there is limited or nearly non-existent industry and jobs. Collecting tarantulas for sale is a quick way to make a buck. And in many places, this is either unregulated or the regulations are simply not enforced. There are also bad actors that go into these areas and illegally collect specimens, then smuggle them out of the country to sell cheaply into the pet trade. A lot of the times, the tarantulas that are caught and introduced into the pet trade are male tarantulas that were seen wandering around during mating season. These mature males do not live long after reaching sexual maturity, and their removal at the time can have devastating effects on local populations. Occasionally, gravid females are unintentionally removed from the wild, and a new tarantula keeper that just picked up an adult tarantula at their local pet store brings it home only to find it has dropped an egg sac within a few weeks of settling into its new enclosure. An egg sac full of spiderlings that should have been able to live in the wild and help maintain the native population. There is also an issue with people going into areas where newly discovered or described species of tarantula have been found and smuggling out breeding pairs to breed in captivity and sell the spiderlings into the pet trade. Sometimes this is done without proper paperwork and in violation of regulations and laws. Of course, there is another side to this coin. Most importantly, and probably the most obvious, is that the number of tarantulas removed from the wild for the pet trade constitutes only a small fraction of tarantulas that are disappearing due to the previous two much larger and devastating factors. In many cases, some species of tarantula that were removed from the wild to be bred in captivity have actually helped the species from going extinct. Never removing a tarantula from the wild for breeding purposes will not stop them from disappearing as long as the environment is being destroyed at alarming rates and no efforts are implemented to protect the forests, jungles, and other areas where they can be found. So there are some species that are threatened or even listed as endangered in the wild, but due to concerted breeding efforts in captivity, they are thriving in the pet trade, keeping tarantulas as pets and having a wide assortment of different species that are of every shape, color, and type imaginable helps to raise the awareness of their existence as well as their pivotal roles in their own environments. Learning more about tarantulas usually helps alleviate fears and misunderstandings, which in turn can endear people to their plight and help encourage conservation efforts to protect their wild relatives. Some countries' governments have opted to work with the pet industry instead of working against them. In Mexico, for example, there is a program recently launched that allows approved people to capture and humanely remove adult tarantulas from the wild to be bred in captivity. When a successful egg sac is produced, a certain percentage of the spiderlings are reintroduced into the environment from which their parents were removed. The remaining spiderlings are registered and given certification numbers and allowed to legally be exported into the pet trade in the United States and Canada, responsibly breeding and conserving these species for generations to come, implementing similar programs in other countries where other tarantula species that have become popular in the pet hobby are native, could have similar, mutually beneficial results. And most importantly, being an educated consumer and pet keeper is also pivotal in helping to drastically reduce the amount of wild-caught tarantulas that end up in the hobby, doing simple things like buying from reputable captive breeders and resisting the urge to buy cheap, full-grown tarantulas from the nearest box pet store can make a drastic difference in the demand for wild-caught tarantulas. Stores like Petco, PetSmart, and some large reptile importers and dealers occasionally carry tarantulas they offer for sale. Many times, they don't even know the species' name let alone if it was captive bred or wild caught. Avoid these dealers at all costs and instead buy from dealers and breeders that work specifically with tarantulas. Ask if the pet tarantula you are considering buying was captive bred and try and avoid the temptation to own a tarantula that was very recently discovered or described as your own personal pet. The illegal removal of tarantulas from their habitat solely for the purpose of breeding and selling as pets gives us all a bad name. And sometimes that is very hard to resist, especially with how colorful and unique some of these more rare tarantulas can be. But the increase in demand cannot be so quickly met with the supply available from legal, responsible captive breeding, which can make it very tempting for bad actors to poach specimens from the wild to sell into the pet trade at very high prices. Honestly, there are hundreds of species of tarantulas already being bred captively and readily available in the pet hobby. We don't all always have to have the newest and flashiest species. If we all do 
our part and patiently wait for captive bred spiderlings to become more available, we can really help lower the market for wild caught tarantulas, doing what we can to help protect these tarantulas in the wild. If you want to learn more about tarantulas, just click the playlist that is appearing on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment with other tarantula related topics you'd like to hear me discuss in the future.